Alright, let's go ahead and get started so we don't run out of time. Okay. Do you just have some security? No, I don't. It's Miss B. Um, those of you who were in the last session, raise your hand so I can make sure to check you up for this one too. So Compton, and then it's all the same guys. Okay. I'm going to get that. Thank you. Hello. Um, I'm good. I the it's in bird. Okay. So, hi guys. My name is Jen Story. Um, I am a senior. I'm graduating. I'm going to be studying computer science. This is Catherine. She's also studying computer science. This is Caitlin. I'm studying public health at UC. And I'm Patrick. I'm studying psychology at the University of Virginia. Yeah. So, uh, we're going to do presentation on scholarships. Uh, scholarships for money. So here you go. Um, this next slide has been reflects to show that, like, like I do sort of know what a scholarship is. I've gotten a few of them. That's the whole point of it. Right? So, um, how do I go to the use the arrow keys? Anyway, so these are all the awards that I got in just that just all right, and it's a lot of dollar amounts and a lot of text. Um, you don't have to worry about a whole lot, but like the big one, I got the Stamp Scholarship Award, which is like this big national um, organization, the Stamps Foundation, which is now being called the Stride Foundation for some reason. Um, and they, a lot of schools participate in it. They select people that apply for their programs to be Stamps Scholars, and then the Stamps will like them to be in the program, and then you get a bunch of money and other benefits. Um, and then these are all the other places that I like doing stuff. Um, so like, questions about scholarships. First off, do you complete the FAFSA? Yes, please do complete the FAFSA. You get money from the FAFSA, even if they're just for not doing anything. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Can you tell them what the FAFSA is? The FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid or something like that. I, oh, I spelled it wrong on there. That's fine. Um, yeah, that's fine. Um, so that should be your first step. Like, when you're thinking of scholarship, this is the first thing you need to do. Yeah, so the FAFSA and will award you money based off of your um, need, uh, is what they call it. So you have to give all your, like, parents' tax information and stuff, and they determine how much money you make and how much you should pay for college and how much you'll get from the government and all that sort of stuff. Um, I didn't end up getting anything, but it happens. You can get loans. You qualify for loans with it as well. Um, and I did get some loans, so that's good. And so, the a different thing other than the FAFSA through College Board? The CSS, yes. um, I don't remember what it's said, but it's the College Board FAFSA that some colleges require. I Only one college ever asked for it that I applied to. Really? So keep that one in mind as well. Um, second, you don't need to be like valedictorian or anything like to get scholarships and stuff. A lot of times, a lot of scholarships just don't even get applied to for a lot of universities. So you could just default win some of them. I mean, that could happen. Um, so like, you don't need to be in the top of your class. You just need to apply for it and do the work for it. And a lot of times, you will get rewarded for it. Um, and then apply as early as possible, because that will drastically help your chances of getting the scholarship. So the way that they award scholarships a lot of the time is they do it kind of as they come in. So the first ones that come in, there's a lot more scholarships like spots available, and they'll put you in that spot the earlier you, you apply. So you want to apply as early as possible, so there's more spots open for you. Um, so yeah. So here's my keys to success. All right. Number one, be humble. All right. So the first thing you're gonna happen, you're gonna get rejected to a lot of things. All right. It's gonna happen. You're just gonna have to deal with it. All right. Um, I applied for the University of Missouri's like scholarship, the uh, Houston Alumni Scholarship. So it's specifically, it's the University of Missouri, they have this specific outer state scholarship for people in Houston. And it's about like $500 or something a year, or something like that, all right? Somehow I didn't get it out of like, I don't even know, I wrote like five essays for this thing. It's like a $500 scholarship. They still didn't give it to me. And I'm still pissed about it. Like, <laughs> like I, I don't understand. I, I put so much work into Like, how many people are applying to the University of Houston? <laughs> also, consider, like, middle-tier universities, quote-unquote, like public state universities and things like that, they generally offer a lot more scholarships for things like merit and, like, curriculars and stuff than the, like, big 
Ivy League universities do. I'm pretty sure Ivy League literally doesn't offer merit-based, like they only offer need-based scholarships. So if you want to get a lot of scholarships somewhere, you're probably gonna have to look lower, quote unquote. Um, also, treat applying scholarships like a job. You're gonna have to do it a lot, right? So right on July 15th or of August 1st, or whenever you start writing your applications, you should start looking for scholarships at your universities. There's gonna be a few different places that they'll be located. Generally, it's the, like the, 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 the university's website itself should have like a finances section, student aid, that sort of thing. That'll have some scholarship information. There will also be for your department that you're applying to that hosts your major. So like the College of Sciences or Engineering or whatever, they'll also have, sorry, my voice is faltering. They'll also have um, scholarships for their specific department that you can apply to. And then there's external ones that don't actually belong to the university that will all be on like other websites like nitro.com, FastWeb, the scholarships. I don't know, I didn't use those websites myself. They seem kind of shifty to me. Um, I didn't trust them, so I didn't go with them, but like I've heard people have gotten money from them. So go try those out as well. Um, and then a lot of the things when you're doing your scholarship applications, just be yourself, really. Um, I can't tell you how to sell yourself to other people, but I can tell you that it's going to be a lot better. Like all of these scholarships they're doing interviews for and things like that, they just want to have a conversation with someone. So you just want to be yourself. You just want to chat with the person you're interviewing with. Um, a lot of these interviews aren't like job interviews. They're just chats. Um, and so just be yourself and you'll come off a lot nicer, a lot more candid. It'll really improve your application. Um, and uh, don't don't be hard to get. They want to give you scholarships. Don't like not give them applications. Give them all the applications you want. Send them emails about like, oh hey, I applied, or like, is this okay, or something. Just keep on getting your name out there for things, and they will eventually pick you for something. They'll get to know your name over a period of time if you consistently like talk to them or email them, things like that. And so you really want to talk as much as you can with them. Um, you don't want to hide from your academic advisors. So yeah, thank you for uh, Ms. Phelan and Ms. Fletcher and everyone, because I got a lot of money for the solid other page. And I didn't do it myself. I need a lot of people to help me with it. So talk to your counselors and advisors here and at college when you do get there, because they'll help you with all this stuff. Um, so yeah. Questions for the audience. We also have um, three people here who would like to say something, I'm sure. Um, yeah, go Yes. Uh, so where do we find the, or where do we apply for the college, the scholarships? Um, so a lot of the, all of the scholarships will have their own application for the most part. Um, and it depends based off the application scholarship what like you have to do for them. Um, I like sort of tier them in my mind a little bit, quote unquote. It's not, just, but like to find them, just Google like scholarships oh. for whatever you're into or yeah. forever, whatever you want to do. Yeah. There's um, two types. There's, there's the school ones and then the outside scholarships. So when you apply to say A and M. A&M's also going to have like a scholarship application or it's part of the normal college application and they'll put you into the pool to compete for those scholarships. And if you want scholarships that are outside of the school, you can Google them, um, use different resources, talk to local businesses. Ms. Phelan has a scholarship bulletin board that's really helpful. She compiled like a really long list of scholarships that she knows of and that's where I got most of my scholarships. So definitely look at that. and. Just don't be afraid, just put your application out there because the more you send out, the more chances you have of actually getting them. And but I do want to just say one thing because Beckett said to Google it. Be leery a little bit because I know Chance said a lot of the external websites shifty. are just trying to get your email address so they right. can sell them. Um, so like you have to be careful where you go. So is it um, so is it best to go to like the college website? I think 
I think applying for the college scholarships is the best thing to do because that way you know for sure you're getting your money and then you don't have this like awkwardness of getting it lined up with your university so you can actually pay for it properly because that whole process can be kind of awkward sometimes. But there are some um, reputable scholarship search engines that I haven't plenty. posted, yeah. but just be a little like you said, like fast web. It's reputable, but there's some crazy stuff on there, right? A lot of marketing stuff. So just, just wanted to put that. So, like, so like, what do you recommend? Like, I go to. Um, if okay, so take the college that you want to go to. Go and usually on their website, like homepage, they'll have a search bar in the top right. If you just type in scholarships, it'll send you all of their like pages that has the word scholarships on it anywhere. And then you can just search down there. The like student aid website will be the first one that shows up, and that'll just have a list somewhere on it. Um, that you can just go down and apply it. It'll be links for you when you actually get to that step. Um, there's also sometimes, like the college, um, like the university will have their scholarships programs and stuff like that. But then depending on the major and like the actual like college inside the university that you go to, so like engineering or like natural sciences or I'm trying to think of more examples, but I can't really right now. It kind of depends on the college. I can't. UT has an engineering one and a natural science one specifically, whatever. Um, but they'll also have their own departmental scholarships, which are separate and often don't get applied to because people don't know they exist. So if when you're applying to your university, when you pick your major, figure out what college has that major in it, not like, like UT has the College of Sciences below it that's in UT, right? I, feel like, I don't know if like, this was confusing to me. Am I explaining okay. this? Okay, there, <laughs> there are college scholarships for a specific college. Look them up and apply to them. Look up like UT Austin Merit Scholarships. That'll show you like the 40 acre scholarship. I will say, yes, you can apply to the major schools scholarships, but they're a lot more competitive than local scholarships. Everybody wants a $40,000 scholarship. But Miss Phelan's scholarship bulletin, seriously, that's where I got most of my scholarships. Um, there's a lady at Tomball High School, I think, who like updates that spreadsheet constantly, and she keeps track of all of the deadlines and all of the links and the description and everything that you need for the scholarship and how much money the scholarship gets. So I would make my own spreadsheet, copy and paste the scholarship you want to apply to and the ones you qualify for, and then apply to those and keep up with your deadlines. because. Local scholarships are way easier to get than like the big forty thousand dollar college scholarships because there's a lot less people competing for them. It's like you can personally get to know them, and also like they're most likely gonna give one to everyone who applies usually because sometimes like only like a couple people apply, so then you're an automatic winner. But that's Patrick, not the case. Patrick, we've been cutting you up. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, that said, like, don't be afraid to go for national scholarships, like. One that's kind of specific in like the terms of things that you can Google for is the Hispanic Scholarship Fund. You Google scholarship for Hispanic students and it pops up. Um, and that's a national scholarship where you just write a few essays. And like right now I'm a finalist for it. And then I have to give a shout out to the Posse Foundation, which is another national scholarship kind of. Um, they have bases in each city. Um, and Ms. Phelan will send out information to apply to be nominated from Team HS because there's four people that can be nominated from They sure only have two. Two. There's two. <laughs> there's been too many winners, I guess. Uh, uh, yeah, because we used them all. Um, and like this year we had two out of our four um, actually get the scholarship, which is pretty crazy. Um, so like, don't be afraid to go for those things. Um, and I wanted to talk about interviews a little bit if you had anything to add first. Generally those, the ones that require interviews aren't usually financially based, like they don't really take into account financial needs. So it's, it can be merit based, it can be leadership based, like the Posse scholarship was. Um, and like those, what's really important is just to be yourself for one for sure. And then to try to get noticed, like don't be afraid to be more confident than you are usually. And I don't know how they're gonna be like next year, because we're online. But don't be afraid to be self-confident. How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> ask questions. Um, when they say any questions, ask one. Like be in the list of people that ask the question at some point during the like session or the interview or something like that. 
because that shows that you are interested in them. And that's the biggest thing that a college wants is they want you interested in their university when they give you the scholarship. Or I'm um, sure at some point they'll be like, um, be like, they'll try to give you a situation where you have to come up with a unique solution. Um, like Posse was very in depth, so that was one of the things that we had to do. Um, and I did an impression of a frat boy and people loved it. So like, just don't be afraid to make jokes also, like be a little more comfortable. That said, don't make a fool of yourself. <laughs> Um, it also helps to prepare your resume so for your college applications, but when you also go to interviews, if you have that and you like just blank, you know that, hey, this is a list of stuff that I did and that's something I could talk about. And before any of this, like most, even at the, even the financially, like the ones that don't take into account financial need, you need to fill out your FAFSA first. So that should be like one of the first things that you do when it opens up in October. October, October 1st, not before. So you have to fill one of those out in order to even apply for one? Uh, for a lot Sometimes. of them, yes. Yeah. yeah, so if you're applying Just for any do school it. scholarships, that's like a requirement is do it. The FAFSA is never going to hurt you, so you should always just do it, and then a lot of colleges require it at just certain parts and stuff like that, so like just do it anyway. It's a one-time thing that you do in October. You have to do it once, once a year. Or once a year. When but you're like, in college. And actually, some of y'all haven't watched my video yet, I guess. FAFSA is required for your class starting. You're with your, starting with your class. It's going oh. to be a high school requirement. Oh. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Crazy. We'll talk more. <laughs> it really only takes like 20 minutes if your parents have your you financial have your documents YouTubes. prepared. <laughs> yeah, it's it's prepared. Tell your parents to keep their tax information. Yeah. You will need it. All right. I had to. Um, oh, it was. We had to find my mom's W two from like 2019, and we could not. It was impossible. Uh, it took a really long time, like a month, to get the W two, and go to complete the FAFSA. It was great. So just don't don't do that. Have it ready. Um, and it's and, it's, and it, it, we can't just do it in front of the summer. We have to do it. Yeah, October, it October first. first. It's also um, although on Common App you can play around with Common App and your applications, but that's not scholarships. It's also important to note once you fill out your FAFSA, you get your EFC, your expected family contribution, which is what the government says that they think you can pay for college. That is not the same thing as how much you will pay for college. So I know, um, like what I was expected to pay for college was like twenty thousand dollars more than what my EFC was. Um, so. That is not a hard and fast thing. What you what really happens is your FAFSA get the information gets passed to the schools, and each school um, each school does their own evaluation and determines what they think you should be able to pay. So for me, what each school determined I should be able to pay was more than my FAFSA. That is not true for everyone. For some people, their FAFSA says you know your your family EFC might be twenty thousand dollars, and then some school set comes in and says. Actually, we'll give you need-based aid to the point where you only have to pay fifteen thousand dollars. Anyone have any questions? I know that's super big. All right. Do you have anything you want us to talk more about? Oh, there is one other thing. Um, if you are applying to schools that only give give need-based aid. Actually, if you get need-based aid period, you have to declare any private scholarships that you get. So any scholarships that are not from the school, you have to tell the school that you got them. And keep in mind, generally, that school will subtract what you get in scholarships from your need-based aid. So you get if you get $5,000 in private scholarships, generally, they will say you get $5,000 less in need-based aid because of that. Yeah. Um Sorry, a lot of the scholarships will conflict with each other when you start trying to apply for like a lot of them at once. Um, and so they'll, it, it's always complicated rules depending on how the college does it themselves and their scholarships and things like that. Um, and you have to look them up, but they will, like the amount that you get in scholarships won't necessarily equal the amount that you'll actually like, won't have to pay. Um, because they'll be like, oh, you got this one from over here, and we're just not going to give you as much from the other scholarship you got because you already got this other one. 
Um, and like that'll that's not that, that's not just external scholarships. Like he was saying, like that can sometimes be within the same college. They won't give you the same amount of money. They'll subtract from other scholarships. Just FYI, like pay attention to those. The fine text matters. That kind of um, sucks. We just have to deal with it. Yeah. Did you have a question? Oh uh, uh, yeah. Um, so you're saying that um, like if we have more than one scholarship, it's it's possible that they'll conflict and you won't get like the sum of both of them you'll just get like a part you shouldn't really worry them. about that now just yeah. apply yeah. to it just apply to all of them it, and then, then when you get them later the the numbers might not line up that's, money is money not it yeah get as money much as you can money. money is still money you so. also will be needing letters of recommendation so i think you should be talking to your teachers now before the school year ends and putting your name out there like hey like do you think you could write a letter of recommendation for me? And they're going to be asking you for your resume and different other things. So make sure you have those ready. But definitely ask before school ends. I know, like Miss Lee has like a list that she makes, and she has a deadline to be put on the list. So, and you also want to give them enough time to write, like at least a couple months, I would say. So, so how much time did y'all spend on actually applying to scholarships? I was done with my actual college applications pretty early. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I told you that at some point, whenever that happened. Um, and then pretty much every single day after that was working with scholarships. So it was a lot. Um, and I didn't actually get a lot necessarily um, out of all the ones that I sent. But um, I don't know. A couple months, I guess, or something like that. But yes, it did. Uh, look, some take like the application process will take months. Like for Posse, I had like four rounds of interviews that spanned over like five months or something. So it's that. And then the Hispanic Scholarship Fund, I won't even find out if I get it until October. And I applied, what, like three months ago? So, you know, you just got to be ready to wait. Yeah, a lot of the scholarship information will come out in April. Um, not in like what May first is decision day or whatever for most places. So like if your information comes out in April and you then have like what like a week before the deadline decision deadline of where you have to go. So I don't know. A lot of scholarships will show up a lot later than what you would prefer. So you can't really bank a lot of times on having scholarships when you go. It depends on when you actually like decide to enroll in the university. Um, so like just wait around for April is usually when things start like you get them back after you apply it. Um, whether you got accepted or not is in April. That's just the date to look forward to, I guess. Keep in mind, I see like usually a rule of thumb is however much time you put in is like what you're gonna get out of it. So if you don't put any effort into it, don't expect any scholarships if you don't spend time researching and writing your essays, like don't expect anything, but if you put a reasonable amount of work into applying to scholarships, you should be getting into it. Even like the small ones, because you get a two hundred dollar scholarship, usually that goes into like it just goes to you, so you just have two hundred dollars to spend on things like books or whatever you need in college. So some of them will send them to the school, like a couple thousand. So they'll usually send it to the school, but if it's like less than five hundred, sometimes they'll just mail you a check and you just have five hundred dollars that you can spend on anything. Yeah, so if you do happen to get to the point of applying for so many scholarships that you go over the cost of the school, a lot of times you just get a check written to you and you just have cash. So um I don't know. That's a goal to shoot for. I've never seen that before. So if someone does do that, please message me. That depends on the scholarship. That. Please, Sometimes someone get enough scholarships to play for all of their school. That would be amazing. I just want to see the like balance sheet, you know. Anyway. Also, foundation is full tuition and leadership based. So apply for it. You know what? If you need to go, go ahead and go so we can start the next session. Feel free to grab a snack if you want. I mean, like, the majority of them. Maybe more than I mean, they really thought you were.